morning. All right, we have a full week this week. If you look in your bulletin on Thursday mornings at 10 a.m., we have the card ministry. Last week, they were able to send out 32 cards. So if you have an address of anyone who's on the prayer list but not a church member, please pass that on to Connie Harris. Uh, Friday, we have the Grace House Glow Run in the evening, and Saturday morning, we have both Lead Team and Lifeline. Um, if you'll look on the back of your bulletin, the list of what we still need for Lifeline is there, and we also this month are asking if you have any extra produce from your garden, bring that, and we're going to set that out on a table for people to pick up as they drive through. We've seen a lot of people have extras that they're willing to donate, so please bring those. Um, last week, we went to the Back to School Bash in the county and handed out school supplies and information about church service times, Lifeline, the preschool. We saw about 330 children, so it was a great turnout, and lots of people came and helped. Also, please note that the Methodist men's breakfast for this month has been canceled, and the ARC trip will be rescheduled. I would also like to point out that today is both Sharon Kay and Miss Suzanne's birthday, and tomorrow is Mimi's birthday, and I was told that singing might embarrass them, so instead, Sharon Kay is going to perform a birthday dance after the service. <laughs> All right, our <laughs> read along with me our call to worship. I remind you, dear children, your sins have been permanently removed because of the power of his name. I remind you, fathers and mothers, you have a relationship with the one who has existed from the beginning. And I remind you, young people, you have defeated the evil one. I write these things to you, dear children, because you truly have a relationship with the Father. I write these things, fathers and mothers, because you have had a true relationship with him who is from the beginning. And I write these things, young people, because you are strong. The word of God is treasured in your hearts, and you have defeated the evil one. Please join me in prayer. God, this morning we come to you with our community and our nation's leaders on our hearts. We pray for them and their upcoming decisions as they guide us. We pray for all of those who are sick and those that cannot join us. And as always, all of those on our prayer list. We ask that you open our hearts and minds to the preaching of your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. If you would like to stand as we sing our opening hymn, I am thine, O Lord, in your hymnal. It is hymn 419. We will sing the first and last stanzas. you please join me with our Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Uh, just real quick, I want to say that um, yesterday we, we did get a chance just to go to the ark, and something happened there I thought was, I was, I was thinking about prayer a little bit, and we got there, and there was this big, long line to get in. You had to wait in one of those little, you know, lines like this that goes, goes dick, 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 and you had to get to a window to talk to someone. And I got it, I pulled up, I was like, oh my goodness, I don't want to wait in that big, long line. But then I remembered, my wife works at the ark. My wife has connections. My wife called ahead. And there is a little window called wheel call. And so when everybody else is trying to fuss and fight and get access to these windows, because I knew someone important, I got to go right up there and said, my wife said I could come here and you would let me in. And she said, yes, you may, Mr. Robinson. <laughs> and I thought, how, what a privilege it is for us to be able to boldly go before God because we come in the name of Jesus Christ. And we come not with our own righteousness, but with his. And able to come and say, Lord, hear our prayers. Today, as we go to Lord in prayer, a couple of names I do want you to be in prayer for. I want to lift up David Kelm's brother's wife, Roger, uh, Roger's wife, passed away this weekend. So please keep that family in, in your prayers. Also, you've been praying for um, a little baby named Ella that we've been praying for, a friend of ours. She was doing better this week, but she, she's only about a pound, isn't it, wife, Denise? About a pound. And, um, but, but she had uh, pneumonia this week, and so it's, it's really it's a struggle. So please keep her. She was uh, 24 weeks when she was born. So please keep her in your prayers, okay? Let's bow our heads to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, great is your faithfulness. Great is your love, great is your mercy, great are you. And Father, we are grateful that we can come before you today, that you hear our every prayer, that you know our every need, that before even a word is on our tongue, you know already what it is. Lord, you see the struggles we go through. Father, today we want to lift up all those in our prayer list. We want to pray for the Kelm family and for the heartache they're going through as they mourn the loss of a loved one. Lord, for those who lost loved ones this week, we bring them before your throne and Lord, pray that your loving arms will be wrapped around them and that you will care for them. That you would remind them of the wonderful hope we have in Jesus Christ. Father, give them a vision of heaven and how glorious it is father we thank you for just your presence here and lord as we are gathered i pray that you would just speak to our hearts lord i know that right now there's so much going on around us and there's so much strife and so much worry and so much anxiety but lord just as you spoke to the storm and said be still may you speak to our spirit Will you tell us to be still? Will you give us peace and reassure us that we are safe in you and that you will safely guide us through? Lord, we trust in you. We trust because we know your power. We trust because we have experienced your love. And so, Father, 
may we just be at peace in you. And Lord, as we worship today, may you draw us closer to you. If there are things in our life that are keeping us from you, Lord, may we tear those off so we may run the race with you. Father, may we come before you, begging for your mercy, basking in your grace. So Lord, it's with this confidence that we now pray the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray as we say as one, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Would you stand again and join us in our second song of the morning, Raise a Hallelujah. Hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah I wear I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me Come forward, we worship God with our tithes and offerings. Let us bow our heads together. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Lord, you are the giver of all good things. And Lord, we thank you for the many ways you have blessed our lives. And as we return these tithes and offerings unto you, we pray that you would use these to further your kingdom. May it be used to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry, to give comfort to those who are hurting. 
and to share the good news of Jesus Christ across this world. Father, bless these tithes and offerings and further them for your kingdom. In Christ we pray, amen. have all of our young kids to come down at this time and if you brought your backpacks please bring those with you all right so are y'all ready to go back to school you excited I bet your parents are. <laughs> well, here in a moment, we are going to bless your backpacks, but I want us to tell the Bible story today. Because, you know, it rained pretty hard this week, and I want to tell you a little story about rain. Okay? One time, there was this prophet named Elijah, and Elijah was living at a time when there was a really bad king. His king's name was Ahab. And Ahab was supposed to love God, but he did not love God. He did not serve God. He worshiped other gods. And so God said, because you are doing this and you are leading my people astray, I'm not going to let it rain for three years. Could you imagine it not raining for three years? Well, Elijah had to go tell Ahab this and tell him it's not going to rain for three years. And Ahab got mad and he said, I don't believe you're God. I don't believe it's not going to rain. Well, all of a sudden, the clouds went and they were gone. And then people kept thinking, maybe it's going to rain tomorrow and it didn't rain. And then one week went by, and two weeks, and three weeks, two months, and then a whole year, and then two years. And it just kept getting worse and worse, and, and everybody was getting parched and dry, and the, the ground was caked with that cracked mud. It was ugly, and everybody was like, oh, we are so sorry, Lord, we're miserable. And Elijah, the prophet, kept praying. He said, Lord, please, end the suffering, end the misery, please, let it rain. And then God said, one day, Elijah, the days are coming, it's going to start raining. And so Elijah was excited, 
And he went out there and he started praying. And he prayed, Lord, let the rain come. And he looked up and there was nothing. And so he had his little friend there and he said, hey, you, go to the sea. See if you see any clouds. And the guy ran, (laughs) came back and said, nope, no clouds. And Elijah's like, God, you said. He prayed a second time, oh, Lord, please let the rain come. You said it was going to rain. Looked up, no cloud. Hey, run, see if you see anything. He did that two times, three times, four times, five times, six times. And finally, on the seventh time, he said, Lord, please let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. And the guy, he said, go look. And the guy looked and he said, oh. And he ran back to Elijah. And he said, guess what I saw? He's like, what? He said, there was a cloud coming out of the sea, and it looked like a rain cloud. And Elijah's like, ah! And he got so excited, and he started running. And so the servant said, hold on, I'm going to catch up with you. And so he got his chariot, started running, but Elijah's running so fast, like, (laughs) and he ran to tell the king and said, it's going to rain. And guess what happened? It started raining. You see, the thing I want you to take from this is that Elijah did not give up praying. He kept praying and praying and praying, and then God opened the heavens and blessed with the rain. I want you all to know that, that God, we need to keep praying and never give up and never get tired of praying, okay? Now, we're going to pray for you this morning, and I want you to see, okay, let me see your backpacks. Oh, can you all bring them right here? All right, let me see these. Oh my, woo, a Minnie Mouse and Minecraft, Baby Yoda. Oh, I love Emily, that is beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna pray over these, but I think we should pray for all of our students. So I wanna ask if you are a student, no matter what your age is, would you come, if you're going to class, would you please come up and just stand with these kids? Okay, don't be embarrassed if you're a teenager, I know. But we want y'all to have a good year too. Okay, now we're going to do one more thing. If you're a teacher, would you come down here? Anyone wants to teach? Yeah, I know we got some of those to teach. All right, because y'all know it's going to be hard on these teachers. (laughs) All right, so I'm going to ask, we're going to pray over them. And so if y'all would just extend your hands and we're going to pray over these folks. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Lord, we just want to pray over these kids and, and all those who are going back to school. Lord, there's just so much going on in our society right now and there's so much to be worried about, but Lord, We want these kids to have a great year. We want them to go and to know that they are under your care. I pray, Lord, that you will open their hearts and their minds. I pray that you would just fill their minds with knowledge, that they would do their very best. And, Father, I pray that they would meet lots of new friends and they would have a great time every time they go to school. And I pray, Lord, that you would use them, that others would know the love of Christ through what they see in these kids. Father, we pray your blessing upon them. I pray their safety. I pray for their well-being. And Lord, I know that when times get tough, when there's a bully or when there's hard homework or whatever it is, I pray these kids will know how much you love them and how special they are. And I pray that nothing, absolutely nothing, will diminish their joy this year. Father, I pray that you just let this be their best year yet and may they go forth knowing they're in you father we just pray this prayer over them and pray your blessing upon these kids and all those who will teach this year for as in Christ's holy name we pray amen amen all right thank y'all now kids I got something for um, for y'all you're going to get your candy here in a minute and and y'all don't get this I'm sorry (laughs) 
here's a sheet for y'all to fill out. And like Cam and Parker this last week, if y'all fill this out and bring it to me after the ser- service, show me that you listen to stuff, you get to get a f- prize, okay? So, so y'all, now y'all don't, don't forget your backpacks. Here you go, sweetheart. Well, I'll tell you, Brother Barry, the retired teachers are also praying hard because we know what the current teachers are going to go through. (laughs) Uh, Our duet this morning is down to one. Clarissa is sick this morning, so Catherine is going to come and sing Shout to the Lord, and I don't think she'd be upset if you would like to join in. The words will be on the screen as well.
Thank you, Catherine. That was beautiful. If you have your Bibles, please take and turn to the book of 1 John, starting in chapter 2. Hear now these words. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard, yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and you, because the darkness is passing, and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light, and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Um, A few years ago, I got an email that was telling me to check my order on Amazon. And so I was like, oh. And I clicked the link, and it took me to this page and and said, you need to refill your financial information to to get your Amazon order. And I was like, okay. Then I thought for a second, wait a minute. I didn't order anything from Amazon. (laughs) And I looked, I double-checked, and this was, it wasn't Amazon.com, it was Amazon.something like AU or whatever, dot com. And so it looked identical to Amazon, but it had just a little bitty tweak to where it was something else. I found out that this was something called phishing. And if y'all never heard of phishing, it's not catching the bass, it's, it's where you are there purposely try to deceive you into thinking you're doing one thing when it's actually something else. Now, don't worry, I I did not fill out my financial information there, and and I know Amazon very well now. (laughs) But it was sad. I'm thinking, who does something like this? Who tries to take advantage and trick people? And I thought, how bad that is. But imagine if people did that when it came to the faith. What if there were those who were trying to pass off something as Christianity when it had nothing to do with Jesus himself? Imagine the harm that would be done then. In fact, there'd be so much harm. They use the same words, but there is no truth behind it. Now, sometimes people do this for financial gain. Other times they do it to lessen the demands of the cross. Sometimes people just want to lessen the demands of the cross and try to accommodate the culture to make the faith more like everybody else. But what happens when they do that is that the faith ends up not looking like Christianity, but it's something entirely else. And you get fooled. I got to show you something. Clyde brought me something this week. Yeah. Uh, Clyde brought me a gift for my daughter. Y'all know my daughter, Clarissa. She loves Michael Jackson. And so Clyde saw this CD at a yard sale, and I think it was a dollar. He's like, you can't pass that up. And so he saw this and said, Clarissa would love this CD. And so he bought it, brought it to me, and, and it says Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, the outside. He opened it up, and it's a Toby Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. It's an upgrade. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but that's what happens a lot of time. People come and say, I come in the name of Christ. This is the faith. And you get down to it, you realize they use the same terminology. They use the same things, but there's no truth found underneath the foundation. And this is what John is dealing with when it comes to First John that we've been st- studying. John is dealing with folks who are Gnostics, and what they are doing is that they are trying to combine the Christian faith with Greek philosophy to make it more approachable to the Greeks. But in doing so, they are denying the very basics of the Christian faith. And so John, at this time, who's an old man, is reading, is seeing all this, and he is having none of it. And so what John has said thus far, he said, look, and I always try to imagine John is in his 90s, so he's saying, hey, you little whippersnappers, 
I saw Jesus himself. I was with him. I walked the streets of Galilee with Jesus. I heard him teach. And the message he gave to me is the message I gave to the church, not the one you're peddling. And he said, the message that we gave to you, that Christ gave to us, that we gave to you, is that God is light and there is no darkness in him whatsoever. And we are called to follow him and walk in that light. And when we walk in that light, it will do a few things. First of all, we'll start to see the sinfulness within us. And then we will experience that wonderful forgiveness that God gives to us. And as we go through that, that message will start to change us. So we become more and more like Jesus Christ. And that's where the good news, the gospel, is both a relational and a transformational message. We walk to be with Christ, but we walk to be like Christ. And the more we walk, the more we get to be like him. And so what John was dealing with is he had folks who were purposely walking in the darkness, denying Christ, walking away from Christ, but yet claiming to be the torchbearers for Christ. And John said, no, you can't do that. And so John's going to give us kind of a little test. So if you want to determine whether someone is really in the faith, this is three things they got to get right. Now, I want to clarify this as we go through this. Y'all, this is not a witch hunt, okay? You don't go through and saying, let me test to see whether or not you're really a Christian, okay? That's not what this is about. We are always in the process of learning and growing, and y'all stumbling. We make a mess And there are times when we can confuse and make mistakes. But there are people who are purposely seeking to diminish the faith and corrupt it and change it to something that's not. So there are three areas we want to look at this this morning. Orthodoxy, which is right belief. So that's our head. What are the core beliefs that establish us as Christians? Second thing, right living, orthoproxy. Our hands, our feet. Are we living life for Christ? And third, orthocardio, that means right heart, right loving. Has our heart been changed where we love others the way that God has called us to live? And so we're going to look at those three areas real briefly this morning and see, are we living in that manner? So the first test we'll look at is this, is our belief test. Now this is interesting, in in chapter 1, he says, you will make my joy complete. And then he goes to the next verse and says, and this is the message we have received that we pass down to you. So John has shared the gospel with people. He has shared the message, and so the people know the truth. But then you got people who are peddling something other than truth, and God, I mean, John is getting mad at this. So I want you to read this, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, 21. Excuse me. He writes, I do not write to you because you do not know the truth but because you do know it and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a man is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has a Father, and whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So what he's saying is, look, I've given you the truth. You know it. But yet these folks are over here, and you know that they're telling a lie. How do you know the lie? Because you know the truth. So don't listen to them, because they're giving you something other than Jesus Christ. And that's where our beliefs are important, because beliefs identify who we are, what we value, and what our foundation is. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to talk about doctrine and all that because it gets kind of, I mean, people get dogmatic with stuff. I know. There are some folks who love to argue religion. If someone likes to argue religion, get away from them, okay? Because they're just bad. (laughs) But you got to have both the knowledge and the heart. Now, some say, I just want to experience Christ. Well, that's great, but you got to know who you're experiencing. Could you imagine if you went on a date And you're sitting there, and your date is across from you, and you start to tell them about yourself, and you say, oh, well, my name is Barry, and I work, and she she goes, shh, 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 less talky, more kissy. (laughs) You're like, what? (laughs) Don't you want to know me? (laughs) 
But how many times do we do that with God? God, I want to feel you. I want to experience you. And God says, this is who I am. We're like, God, don't tell me who you are. Just give me. (laughs) And God says, you got to know me. You got to know who I am. And so beliefs are important. Now, now, understand, beliefs in God, that, that we are always growing in our beliefs. I've been married to my wife for over 26 years, and I'm still learning more about her, okay? So, so we are constantly growing more in love, growing in our knowledge of each other, so we're growing in faith. There's a difference between growing in belief and then loving the wrong person, <laughs> And sometimes we don't know who God is because we've never taken the time to let God reveal himself to us. And so beliefs are important. And there are certain beliefs that are simply not up for grabs because they define us. This is what we call the apostolic faith. It was a message that Jesus gave to the apostles. The apostles then gave to the church. And they define what the Christian faith is. And it's not ours to change. You just can't change it because you don't like it. It's kind, of, it's kind of like this. It's football season. Y'all, I love football, okay? My, 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 my wife is shaking her head and said, oh, Lord, not that. I love to see people tackle. I love to see people run. I love to see the hits. I love to see the quarterback throw the ball. Now, imagine if someone came along and said, you know what? That, that, that American football is it's kind of violent. I just don't like that. And there's too much hitting and too much stuff going. It's kind of boring. So, so here, here's what we're going to do. That, that little ball, it's, it's not round enough. Let's make it round, okay? And then you're not allowed to hit each other. In fact, if you get within five feet of someone, you can just fall on the ground and pretend you've been shot. And then I want you to, to run And I want you just to use your legs and not use your hands. And I want you to run and try to kick it, not not get across this thing, but just kick it into this little goal. And we'll call it football. And you're like, that sounds like soccer. No, it's football. You're like, no, no, this is football. No, this is football. Do you see how we use the same terminology, but we change it? John says you can't, there are certain things that define what Christianity is. And the key to the Christian faith is Jesus Christ. There's a lot of things we can argue about. But one thing we cannot argue about is Jesus. He is Lord and he is Savior. Do you know the very first creed that came to the church was simply three words. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Lord that was the thing that set Christians apart and anything that cheapens that lessens it is not from God so the question we need to ask ourselves is what do we believe about Jesus because what you believe about Jesus will determine what you believe about God the Father how do we know God is love we look to the cross we see how Jesus loved and cared we know that so let me ask who is Jesus in your life And I don't mean just simply in a theology sense, but who is Jesus to you? John Wesley once was the founder of Methodist Church. I've told you this story before. One time he was struggling with his faith and having a hard time, and he was on the ship, and the ship was in the middle of a storm. It was going down, but he saw these Christians, and they were praying, and they didn't have any fear. They were singing hymns. And so he went to the pastor of these Moravians and said, why aren't your children afraid to die? And the pastor looked at John Wesley and said, do you know Jesus Christ? And John Wesley was a priest at this time. He said, yes, I know Jesus. He is the savior of the world. You know, the right theological answer. But the pastor looked at him and said, yes, but has he saved you? Who is Jesus Christ to you? Now, just on a side note, when the early church was dealing with this Gnosticism and this heresy, they had to define what the essential truths of the gospel was. And so the church met together, prayed together, took the teaching of the apostles and said, we're we're just going to get it down to the bare bones of what the church needs to stand for. These are the ones we are willing to die for. 
And so he took the apostles' teachings and used this as the thing that we're going to say, this is what we stand on. And they put it into a creed. You know what that creed's called? The Apostles' Creed, the one we read this morning. It was there to say, this is the truth that we believe. Now, I just want to cl- clarify this. That does not mean that we have it all figured out. Much of God is a mystery. There are things we'll never know because God is so far above our little brains. But what God has revealed to us, we can't change. So the question is first, belief. What do you believe? Second thing is the behavior tests. What you believe needs to impact your life. Just having all this knowledge in your head doesn't change who you are. It needs to be put into practice. In fact, remember Jesus said, a man who builds a strong foundation, remember the one where the storm hits? It's not just a man who hears his words, it's a man who hears my words and puts them into practice. Is the man who builds his life on a strong foundation. In other words, you have to hear it and you have to do it. And this is what John says. Look, look at verse 3. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. The truth is not in him. In other words, it's not just know, have all the things. You've got to take what you know and do it. Obey him. Listen to him. Let him guide you. And I love this where it says, keep his commands. Now, y'all, we've got to be careful. That does not mean that you will be perfect because none of us are. We are far from it. But I love what Adrian Rogers said about this. He said that the, the term keep there, it's actually a nautical term. It's used by sailors, and it's how sailors would, would use the stars. They would keep to the stars and allow the stars to guide them. And so what you're doing when, when you, you keep the commands, you're allowing those commands to guide your life. You're walking in the light. You're trying to live by how God wants you to live, and you're seeking your best to obey him and follow him and be the person that God wants you to be. Remember what David said? Thy word is a lamp to my feet. This is what he means. And so we got to make sure that, that when we hear the word, we're just not hearing it, we're doing it. That means when God says do something, he's not playing around. He says do it. <laughs> I, I love how when John the Baptist came on the scene, he was getting people ready for Christ, and he was preaching this message of repentance. And boy, he laid it out. He said, y'all get right with God. But people came up and said, okay, repent. What does that mean? And I want you to hear what John said, Luke chapter 3. What should we do then, the crowd asked. John answered, the man with two tunics should share with him who has none. And the one who has food should do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. In other words, stop being bad. (laughs) Stop. Be good. Live in the light. Let Take your knowledge of Christ and let it change your heart and change you. Now again, that does not mean you're perfect. But it means that you're walking the light. It's, It's where... John points out the need for repentance and confession. And that will change you. And when it changes you, you start to look different. Look look at verse 6. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. And this is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Does your life look like Christ? Now again, you're not perfect, but how you approach sin is differently. Are you struggling or strutting? It's kind of like this. If a pig and a sheep fall in a thing of mud, they're going to have two different responses, right? One's going to wallow it and have a great time. The other one's going to say, ugh. When you fall into sin, what's your response? I tell you, one of the things I love is Thursday mornings, we have a prayer meeting. And, and we get to pray together with Dick and Howard and Holly and Lindy. And I encourage you all y'all to come to that. But if y'all have never heard Dick Counselor pray, it's amazing. But one of the things that I've heard Dick pray, and y'all, we all consider Dick to be a saint. Most of us. (laughs) 
But when you hear Dick Counselor pray and he says, Lord, we fail you, but we're trying. Y'all, that just, how powerful that is to where this great man of God is saying, Lord, we're trying to please you. We're, we're messing up, but we're trying. And that's where your life, you're trying. You're trying to stay in the light, to walk in the light. And so you're doing your best. So does your life reflect what you believe? Are you trying to walk in the light? Third thing, final thing, the love test, okay? Now, in, in verse 5, we'll, 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 we'll look, um, look at this, but John has said, this is what you know, and he says, you will obey my commandments, and then it says, and then God's love is made complete in you. So it's when we take what we know about Christ, let it change our lives, then we truly then can start to love completely. And I love this. One of the things that I studied the life of Jesus, what's always amazed me is how much he has loved. Y'all, if we could just love just a smidgen of what Christ loved, if we can love people the way he loved, imagine, imagine how different the world would be. But yet so many people who claim the name of Christ, the one thing we fail the most in is love. In fact, look, look here, verse 7. He says, Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which is you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message we have heard, yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Now, a couple things about that. First of all, you read that, you're like, oh my goodness, I have hate in my heart. Does that mean that I don't love God? Well, this is not just simply an emotional outburst. It's not meaning someone made, made you mad and you're just upset because when that happens, you're not hatred, you're anger, and you get over it. But this is a disposition of your heart to where, and, and, and y'all, y'all know there are just people who are just hateful people you know, they're just life consumed with hate. If your whole life is about hate, then you do not know the love of Christ. And so John says, I'm giving you, it's an old command, but it's a new one, and I want you to experience this love. You say, well, how, how, how can it be an old and a new one? And this is how it's explained to me. I thought it was great. Did y'all know the sun is very old? The sun is billions of, I mean, it's old. But when you go outside each day, what do you say? Oh, what a beautiful day this is. You get to experience new. The command to love is an old one, but y'all, every day we get to experience new when we are in the light, loving Christ and loving, uh, loving others. And when we do that, it changes how we experience it. So this is the ultimate test. How do you love others? So we'll close with this. Let's do a quick test. Who is Jesus in your life? If I said, who is Jesus in your life? And I'm not just talking about in your head, but I mean how you live your life. Is he Lord? Is he in charge or are you in charge? Is he your savior or are you trying to do things on your own? Who is Jesus? Now, I, I don't mean you've got to have it figured out because, y'all, we still struggle with stuff. But who is he? Second of all, does your life exhibit the light of Christ? I want you to compare your life to this. Look at this. This is called the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5. This is what, if you have the Spirit of God in you, this is who you should be. Look at this and just judge your life. Now, again, we're not perfect, but is this the general direction you're going toward? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Or is your life defined by the exact opposite of those things? Third, how is your love life? How do you love folks? Do you love your neighbor? Do you love your enemy? you love like Jesus loves because when you start to love like Jesus it will change you and change the world I'll close with this there's a story told about Ike Miller and, and y'all this is one of those old-fashioned preaching stories 
But Ike Miller, down in back in 1900, he was lived in this Welsh mining town, and there was a minister by the name of Henry Morehouse. And Henry Morehouse came to town, was going to preach revival, and Ike Miller didn't want to have none of it. He said, I don't want no preacher coming here telling us how we ought to live our lives. He said, if a preacher comes in here, I am going to pistol whip him and make him beg for his life. And so everybody said, Henry, don't, don't come preach. Ike's going to get you. And everybody knew Ike was one of the worst people in the world. Ike was known to be a man who loved to get into fights. He loved to steal. He loved to rob. He loved to cheat on his wife. He loved prostitutes. You name the vice, Ike Miller did it. And so it came time for the Sunday meeting, and Henry got up to preach, and back doors opened, and in walked big old Ike Miller. And he came and stomped those boots all the way to the front of the church, sat down. Everybody's like, oh. And Henry got up, and he preached. He didn't preach a hellfire damnation message. He didn't preach God's judgment. You know what he preached on? John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And when he got done, Ike Miller just stood up and he walked out of the church. And everybody thought, oh no, here it comes. But Ike Miller walked out the church doors. He walked past the saloon where all of his buddies were. He walked past the prostitute house where the women were saying, come on, Ike, come on up. He walked into his home where his wife and kids were. His wife, who was terrified of him because he used to beat her up. His kids, who terrified of their dad because he was an abusive man. And they thought dad had come home to beat him up. But instead he said, Honey, get the kids in here. We're going to do something. And they said, Well, oh no. And they said, What are we going to do? He said, We're going to pray. And Ike Miller got down with his family, his kids, and they prayed, and they, they could not remember how to pray. So he said he just simply remembered what it was his mom had told him when he was a little kid. Jesus, meek and mild, have mercy on this, your child. And the town said that from that point on, there was a new man in town. Now, I love that story because the one who wrote about it, guess, guess who, his name, who his name was? Ike Miller. <laughs> it was his testimony. But it's where he heard about Jesus and that Jesus changed his life and it changed his heart on how he saw other folks. And that's what the gospel does for us. Let it change you. Let's bow our heads. Dear heavenly and gracious Father, Lord, the gospel is such a powerful, powerful <coughs> message. The love of Christ can soften the hardest heart. And Lord, I pray that we would just realize how great you are and who you've called us to be. So Lord, may we represent you well. May you change us, may you work in us, and make us more like our Savior, our Lord, our Jesus. Words in his name we pray. Amen. Hymn number 380 simply says, There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Would you stand as we sing the first and the last stanzas? <laughs>
going to say, Cam, you do such a great job. If y'all watch Cam up here, boy, I, yeah, give him a round of applause. I tell you, that candle was being stubborn. Did y'all see that? And Cam wasn't going to give up. And I thought, man, what a great illustration. Satan tries to snout out our life, our, our, our light, but we won't let him. <laughs> Let's bow our heads and be dismissed. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, as we now go forth from this place, may we go forth with your love, your mercy, and your grace. May we go forth and share with the world the love of Christ. May we go out there and show the world the love of Christ. Lord, may you work in us and through us as we try to change this world for your name. Father, bless us and keep us safe. And let us come safely back here next week. For in Christ we pray, amen.